Just picture this. You wake up in the middle of the night to a brilliant light outside. And when you peek out the window, you see the entire Lania Kia supercluster, which our Milky Way is a part of, rapidly approaching Earth. Pretty soon, you'll be able to spot the dual core of our neighboring Andromeda galaxy in the sky. However, we won't have much time to enjoy this spectacle. Before long, our world will be destroyed by gravity. But what happened? In reality, nothing we could actually notice. It's just that a super light invisible substance, dark matter, has vanished from the universe. Scientists believe this very substance makes up the bulk of galaxies' masses and prevents gravity from merging them into a single entity. According to astrophysicists' calculations, dark matter accounts for about 80% of the universe's density. Yet, despite decades of research, scientists have failed to find any proof of its existence. Nonetheless, they firmly believe in their calculations, resembling followers of some cult more than scientists. So, did James Webb really discover a star made of dark matter? Is there a dark side to the universe? And why are scientists most afraid of it not existing? Many cults believe in an all-powerful entity without which our world could not exist. It might be the flying spaghetti monster or pagan gods. But for scientists, dark matter fills this role, and gravity is considered the main proof of its existence. Since the 1920s, astronomers noticed that for gravity to work in space as it does, there has to be much more matter around than what we can see. Recent studies of gas in elliptical galaxies have also confirmed that without this invisible dark matter, galaxy clusters would simply fly apart. Today, scientists can even calculate the percentage of dark matter in a galaxy. In 2016, astronomer Peter van Dockum from Yale University found the galaxy Dragonfly 44, which is 99% composed of this mysterious substance. Its mass is about the same as our Milky Way, but it's way less luminous. And even if we manage to get a super clear photo of Dragonfly 44, we still won't be able to see dark matter as it emits no energy or light. So, to find it, scientists built enormous underground temples. I mean, laboratories. This is the Gran Sasso Research Center, located under the mountain of the same name in Italy. There, the scientists from the Xenon Project, using detectors, are trying to catch traces of dark matter particles colliding with xenon atoms. And there are many such temple laboratories around the world. But they're not all looking for the same thing. That's because there are actually several candidates for the role of dark matter. The first of these are WIMPs, weakly interacting massive particles. They are 10 to 100 times heavier than protons, but as befits a deity, that is, dark matter, they interact with the real world very weakly, almost imperceptibly, so weakly that right this second, Hundreds of thousands of these particles are passing through your body, and you don't even notice it. Other candidates for dark matter include sterile neutrinos, axions, and uncharged photons. But all these particles are only hypothetical. However, scientists have recently seen a real photo of the mysterious dark matter. And guess who took it? Of course, James Webb. In 2023, a team of scientists, Cosmin Ely and Gillian Pollan from Colgate University and Catherine Fries from the University of Texas at Austin, spotted something unusual in telescope images. We're talking about these three red spots, each just a few pixels in diameter. And what's so unusual about them? After all, we've seen far more stunning photos from space. But this trio of scientists suspects that the photo might not just show very distant galaxies, but high brightness stars made of dark matter. According to Catherine Fries, they are nothing like the stars we're familiar with. 
These stars don't have a core, they don't heat up to high temperatures, and they don't produce solar wind. And it's precisely because of this that they can reach gigantic sizes of millions of solar masses. Most importantly, there's no nuclear fusion happening inside these stars. Dark matter stars could have only formed in the universe's early stages when this substance's density was high. But to me, these spots don't seem any different from photos of some distant galaxy. So how can we be sure that this is actually dark matter? The thing is, after analyzing its radiation spectrum, scientists found the so-called absorption line of helium-2, 1,640 nanometers long. Catherine Fries emphasizes that such lines can be found in the radiation spectra of stars, but not galaxies. Moreover, scientists detected no traces of other elements, such as regular helium or hydrogen. Therefore, the photo shows not just any star, but a star made of dark matter. However, to be certain, James Webb needs to photograph these three spots again in better quality. But if the hypothesis about dark matter stars is confirmed, the scientists are going to celebrate this event instead of Christmas. And if it's not, for them it would be an actual apocalypse. But why are scientists so afraid that dark matter doesn't exist that they've almost created an entire cult around it? The biggest headache for a believer is an atheist colleague who, at every meeting, bombards them with arguments that God does not exist. There are such non-believers among scientists, too. Meet Pavel Krupa, who doesn't believe in dark matter. His main argument is the existence of Chandrasekhar dynamic friction. Now, let me explain. When a massive object, say, a galaxy, passes by a cluster of smaller objects, like dark matter particles, something interesting happens. The gravitational influence of the galaxy causes the lighter particles to accelerate, but the galaxy itself must slow down. Moreover, even if the galaxy began to suck in the cloud, the gravitational influence of the large number of particles would still slow it down. By the way, thanks to such gravitational maneuvers, scientists accelerate space probes like the Voyagers. They push off from large objects like Jupiter or Saturn and use the acceleration to reach the solar system's outer planets faster. You might ask, what does dark matter have to do with this? Well, if massive clouds of its particles were really present in every galaxy, astronomers would be able to observe their barely perceptible deceleration. But Pavel Krupa claims that after studying the motion of dozens of star clusters with his students, he found no signs of such deceleration. According to him, galaxies in the universe behave as if they are naked and don't have any additional invisible mass from dark matter. It means that this mysterious substance is just a fabrication. But how do scientists respond to these atheistic objections? Very simply, they ignore them. Because if dark matter doesn't exist, the universe turns into a terrifying place. For example, if not for dark matter, what causes stars to rotate around the galaxy's center faster than they should? Why did the Planck Space Observatory find irregularities in the microwave background of the universe? And what did the James Webb photograph? Are you scared yet? Because I am. And so we fall for the typical cultist tactic, intimidation. They always have a simple answer to complex questions. And in the case of scientists, all the gaps in our knowledge about the universe are filled with dark matter. But are there really no alternatives? Dark matter cultists have a solid argument in favor of its existence. It's the fact that stars at the center and on the periphery of a galaxy rotate at the same speed. Without the additional mass of dark matter, this would be impossible because, according to Newton's law of universal gravitation, the gravitation pull between two bodies decreases with the square of the distance between them. 
But the thing is, along with Newton, we're mistaken when we think we understand how gravity works. Remember the quantum world, where particle teleportation and faster-than-light information transfer are possible. So, at micro-levels, physics operates quite differently. What if the gravity could work differently as well? Proponents of the modified Newtonian dynamics theory believe so. They suggest that when an object in space moves with very low acceleration, the gravitational pull between it and, say, the galaxy's center decreases very slowly. This means that under such acceleration, stars on the periphery of galaxies will move almost as fast as those at its center. It seems that Mond puts an end to the existence of dark matter. I could say so if it weren't for the super-hot bullet cluster. It consists of two galactic clusters that have passed through each other. But we're interested in the gravitational lensing effect they create. You see, light that passes by a massive object in space changes its trajectory. And the greater the mass of the object, the more light refracts. Scientists even use this effect as the magnifying glass for their telescopes. But the bullet cluster refracts light abnormally strongly. Such powerful gravitational lensing simply can't occur without a colossal amount of extra mass. And here, Mond is powerless, as it's currently impossible to explain this effect without dark matter. So, is the cult of scientists not actually a cult, and does their deity really exist? Neither I, nor the proponents of Mond, nor even the cultist scientists themselves have a clear answer to this question. But I can offer you something better than answers a new cult with a new all-powerful deity. And I even have irrefutable evidence of its existence. Take a closer look at spiral galaxies. Do their center swirls look familiar? At the very least, I think they encode the name of the force that created this universe. Write in the comments if you agree with my theory and see you in my cult. I meant in new videos.